Well, I asked and you guys answered. Sort of. You want to see my robot arm progress, but you also want to see my magnetic levitation platform. So obviously I'm going to do both, but I decided to go with the base of the robot arm first because I thought this would be the easier project to finish up. If only I knew. Anywho, let's jump right into it. I'll be working on the mechanical design of the base of the arm first, which includes the rotary platform and the first hinge joint, which will be powered by that harmonic drive I developed in a previous video. I'll also briefly look at some harmonic drive components printed with a marked forge machine. And finally, I'll be building up this, a built from scratch motherboard, which will eventually control the entire robot arm. It uses dynamic stepper drivers, has tons of feature and I.O. support, and should definitely be super quick to get up and running. But first things first, let's start on the rotary joint. And before I even start on that, I had to make sure I had my priorities in line. I still want to use this arm for filming purposes and for general purpose robotics stuff. So as such, my main priorities for this build are to keep it cheap, keep it pretty, and make sure it's powerful enough to hold my camera. NEMA 23s were my go-to for low cost power. I even crimped on some JST connectors for extra professionalism and less risk of them melting when driving at three amps. For power transmission, I originally wanted to use belt drives and pulleys, but I recently discovered this gear profile generator in Autodesk Inventor, so of course I wanted to give this feature a try for the rotary joint. I designed an 8 to 1 reduction using angled tooth profiles, and I'm using an angle because it helps reduce noise and provide smoother motion. But does it actually help? Yeah, no it really does. The angle of the teeth allows the next tooth to engage while the previous tooth is still fully engaged, which just basically makes everything a lot smoother. Cool. So next step is to constrain the joint. The simplest way to constrain a rotary joint is this, a bearing in a shaft. Bonus points if you actually clamp it to constrain the shaft axially. But is this enough for my design? No way. Bearings like this are fantastic for radial loads, but absolute garbage when it comes to axial loads, and especially these super cheap bearings that I buy in order to keep costs down. So how do we fix this? More bearings, of course but not more radial bearings. Instead, we have to add thrust bearings. These bearings are a totally different beast and perfectly complement radial bearings, as they are fantastic at constraining axial compression loads, but trash at just about everything else. So what I did is clamp two of these thrust bearings together with my rotary platform in the middle. I then added a radial bearing in the center, and this ensures that the joint is fully constrained by bearing, which should help provide super smooth and accurate motion even under high loads. Unfortunately, plastic is pretty, well, flexible. And this assembly has a bit more compliance than I would like, but for now this will work. So I'd say it's time to test it. In a previous video, I used this off-the-shelf stepper driver, and it worked alright, but it's pretty big, and for the price, it's not very advanced. I wanted to build my own motherboard from scratch, both to reduce the total cost, and to make sure I had all and only the features that I want in the board. So after weeks of planning and designing, it was ready. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and providing me with the boards and stencils. I ordered this board with the matte black silk screen, which looks absolutely fantastic. I then ordered all the components to populate the board with, but I had to get a little creative since some, all right, most of the important ones were out of stock. I had to make pre-orders, order from multiple sources, and even steal some chips from other projects and boards. But in the end, I just couldn't acquire the MOSFETs that I wanted to use with these new stepper drivers. No worries though, I found a similar spec alternative in the same package and ordered them. Great, so next step is to apply the solder paste using the stencil. Then very carefully place all 200 components. and finally reflow it in my DIY reflow oven. Ouch. Careful, it's hot. Only to discover an issue, a big issue. I was a little careless when I applied the paste and I used poor technique and applied way too much. And even better, the paste I was using was expired and the flux mostly separated out. Lesson learned, right? I bought some new higher quality paste and did the whole thing again much more carefully and this time it came out perfectly. Until I tried to test it, I discovered that the V inline was shorted to ground. Mm, that's not good. All the solder joints looked pretty good, so I didn't think it was an assembly issue. And then it hit me, and I double checked those MOSFETs I'd ordered. Well, it must have been really late because uh, the pinout of these replacements does not match the original. At all. So I found these alternate alternatives, ordered them, reworked the board to add them, 
and great, that fixed the shorting issue. Next up, I flashed the bootloader and uploaded a script to Blinken LED, which all worked perfectly, but that's where the good news ends. I then spent the next 20 hours debugging the new stepper drivers. At first, just enabling the stepper driver would cause the entire board to spaz out. Turns out I had a minor bug in my circuit design, so I fixed that. Then I was having trouble establishing communication with the drivers on the board's spy bus. I purchased a logic analyzer to see exactly what was going on here, and discovered that the drivers were just not responding to anything. So I reworked the whole board to remove all but one driver, just to simplify things, but no luck. Yeah, well, it turns out these 5160 drivers need VIN power for spy communication to work. So I went and added back some more stepper drivers I'd removed, and then things got screwy again. After more debugging, I realized that my unconfigured stepper drivers were all just trying to talk at the same time. I was able to disable them at the right moments and get the 2041 driver working with relative ease. But the 5160 still refused to work. I could talk to it, I could configure it, but I couldn't enable it without it immediately faulting. So eventually I discovered that my alternative alternate MOSFETs were a little weird. These are dual N-channel MOSFETs, and the two sides of this one have different specs, which might just be messing with the 5160's built-in fault detection. Luckily, I somehow found the originally spec'd MOSFETs, they should be on their way soon, but I didn't want to hold up this video any further, so I'm just going to be trying out using the 2041 driver in dual drive mode, which combines the two motor outputs into a single one and provides double the power at 2.2 amps RMS. Not quite the power of my 5160s, which will be around 3 amps, but it will do for now. And after plugging in the motor, thankfully it's working great. Next, I turned my attention back to the hinge joint. Luckily, this guy already put a ton of work into developing a low-cost, high-performance 3D printed harmonic drive. And even more luckily, Bobby over at Makers Acres reached out to me and offered to print some of the harmonic drive components in a more advanced material. It's a nylon-based filament with the option of adding a continuous carbon fiber reinforcement. Unlike the chopped fibers and cheap PLA you can buy, which do increase rigidity but are super weak, this special material by Mark Forged increases strength and rigidity. Bobby sent me the wave generator both with and without the carbon fiber, and as you can see, there's a huge difference between them. This carbon fiber filled version is about as flexible as the PLA, but it's going to be way tougher. So I'm going to go ahead and install this now. He also sent me some of the flex splines done in the nylon. These are a bit more flexible than PLA, but once again, should be way more durable. We'll be evaluating the long-term performance of these components versus PLA in a future video. But for today, I need to figure out how I'm going to integrate the harmonic drive into the rest of the design. Since I wanted the arm to look good, sticking a motor off the side was not going to do. Instead, I wanted to place the motor in the base, and I would use a built-in pulleys to transmit power up to the harmonic drive. But then I had a potentially brilliant or crazy idea. What if I added an 8mm shaft that passed straight through the arm length? One side of the shaft would have a pulley driven by the NEMA 23, and the other side would attach to the wave generator in the harmonic drive. I know, this is really extra but it's worth it for this super clean and symmetrical design. I'm also going to be using heat stake inserts for the first time in this project, again mostly for aesthetic reasons, though the performance is surprisingly good. Assembly is a little awkward at this point, with 8 M5 bolts clamping this whole thing together, but it should be incredibly strong. I'm still using this test arm from my previous video, and that's just because I'm not done with the final design of the arms yet. So as to not waste too much plastic, I'm just gonna pop a hole in this and use it here. And wow, yeah, this thing is ridiculously large. It really looked a lot smaller in CAD, but hey, I'm committed now. The observant of you may have noticed this tooth profile opposite the harmonic drive. That does serve a purpose, but I'll get to that in the next one. On a totally unrelated note, I wanted to quickly mention that I've been working on developing a compact absolute magnetic encoder for each joint, but unfortunately due to the ridiculous amount of time I spent debugging the OSR Prime board, I wasn't able to start testing these just yet. I am really excited for them though. They should add a lot of capability to this arm for almost no cost. Alright, testing time. The rotary joint is working fantastic, but the harmonic is having issues. So it seems like the 3D printed pulley is just slipping on the center drive shaft. 
Pretty easy fix, so I tore it apart, added a flat to the shaft, but that's when I discovered that the wave generator also has a few spots where it jams up really bad, which turned out to be me using slightly too long screws by accident. So with both of these issues fixed, I reassembled the arm and now it's working great. Side note, I will be replacing most, if not all, of the 3D printed shaft clamps and pulleys with off-the-shelf aluminum version for the next iteration. And yep, I know what you're wondering now, how fast is it? Well, the rotary is surprisingly fast. It can run at 5 radians per second with ease and still have tons of torque, and it doesn't max out until well above 10, with low loads, of course. The hinge is much slower, with a max speed around 1 radian a second, but a max usable speed about half of that. This isn't too surprising though, as the joint has a whopping final reduction of 102 to 1. As for power, it's a little tough to test it right now without bolting the base down, but I don't want to do that yet as I'm not really sure where I want it to live. The rotary joint feels like it's got about 3 or 4 Nm of torque at speed, and the hinge, well, it's definitely got way more than that. It doesn't struggle at all lifting itself up. And the base? It's not light, this thing weighs almost 3 kilograms already, but it can definitely lift more. You know what, let's, let's just do this. Here seems good. And turns out my desk is actually hollow. <laughs> Thanks, Ikea. So I'm just going to run through a bunch more tests, see how much power this thing really has. Again, keep in mind, this is not the final stepper driver. It's running at about 33% less current. So that should be a fairly easy improvement once I get the motherboard up and running. Overall, I'm super happy with the progress I've made on this robot arm. It is a surprisingly solid unit. I'm really excited to start building up the rest of the arm. But for that, you're going to have to wait till the next video. Thank you all for watching. As always, a huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out. And that's all for this one. Until next time.